This is the second in a series of quick start videos for Gibbscan. In this video, I'm going to show a quick way to put a profile toolpath on this part. You can see that I've already created a tool. If you have any questions about creating tools or processes, please refer to the quick start video number one. I'm going to come down here, double click, and select Contour Toolpath. Now I can select the tool in this dialog, or I can drag it down from my tool list. Now I need to define the geometry. I'm gonna show you how to use what we call the profiler. It's right here in the upper middle of your screen. I'm gonna click on that. You can see when I do that, I have this plane that is created. What this does is it slices the model and then generates silhouette geometry for all the features. I can actually hold down my left mouse button key, grab the corner and move it up and down to get different profiles. For this example, I want to machine just the outside of this boss. I'm going to select the geometry by just left mouse button clicking on it. The toolpath will start wherever I select the geometry. That will be the start point for my toolpath. Now when I click on it, you can see that I have these little markers. Let me explain what those are. The arrow shows the direction of the toolpath. The line is blue, so the blue arrow shows that in this case, it's going to be climb milling. If I would like to conventional cut, I can click on that arrow there. The square markers show the feature that the toolpath starts and stops on. So if I would like to start on, let's say, this line here, I can just drag that square marker and say, you know what, I want to start on that feature. The round markers show where on that feature the toolpath is going to start. So I could start it there, or let's say I can start it all the way at the end over here. But for this example, I'm just going to go ahead and machine the entire profile. We'll go ahead and click up here. And now I'm going to tell Gibbscam how high and how low to machine this feature. The geometry that I selected is in the middle of this wall. It doesn't matter because I can come up here in my process dialog. I'm going to highlight this box. This represents the top of the feature. I'm going to hold down my Alt key. You can see I get a square cursor and I'm going to click. You can see that it automatically populates the depth of that face relative to my coordinate system zero. So next is going to be the bottom of my feature. Let me highlight that. Hold down my Alt key and I'm going to click on this bottom face. So there's the start of my profile, there's the end of my profile. And now I just click do it. I can click do it in this box. Let me move this out of the way. I can also click it over here or I can right mouse button click and click do it. And there's my profile cut around the part. Let me show how to modify this a little bit with just a couple steps. What I would like to do is take this in multiple passes, not just one finished pass. In my process dialog, you can see in this square, it says Z step. It's gonna step down 375. Let's say I'm gonna change that. I wanna take it in a, in a few steps. So we'll say 50 thousandths. And you can see that it automatically calculates it. It's gonna do it in eight passes. If I click do it, it's going to add another toolpath into my tree on the right. What I want to do is just redo the original toolpath. That's the button right next to here or down here. We can click redo and you can see that it actually recalculates that toolpath. So now what I want to do is profile just the inside of this pocket, not a complete chain around it, but just this profile. Now I already have my tool and my parameters in my process, I just need to change the geometry. So instead of clearing this out and having to create a whole new process, I can just use this process, repick the geometry and click do it. And it's going to create a new process over here or new operation over here. Let me show that really quick. I have it highlighted. I'm going to change the geometry. I want the tool path to start on that feature. And I want it to end, I'm going to pull my black square over, 
on that feature. Now we can see that it's going the wrong way. So I'm just going to go ahead and reverse it. So here you can see it's conventional cutting. If I wanted to switch that, I would just switch these arrows to the start and the stop. So now it's conventional cutting. I want to make sure that my top and my bottom of the pocket are the same. I'm not sure if these surfaces are even. So let me go ahead. It's really easy. I'm going to just select that box, hold down my Alt key, hit the top. Of course, that doesn't change. And now I'm going to go ahead and click the bottom. You can see that it changes a little bit. So now I'm just going to go ahead and click Do It. And we can watch on the right-hand side, it creates a brand new toolpath. So that is contouring, just really quickly, how to profile a part and select geometry to profile and a little explanation of these markers. If you have any questions, please contact Tech Support or your local reseller. You can find all of those numbers at www.3dsystems.com forward slash Thank you.